Hey there, and welcome to my first tutorial with Substance Painter. My name is Stephanie Griffith, and I am a 2D and 3D artist for Timefire VR. Today, I'm going to attempt to show you how uh, to create and save your own brush in Substance Painter. I've decided to go with a water brush since I had some leftover uh, water alphas anyway from another pack that I bought. So I'm going to show you how to create your brush using a black and white alpha that you can either make yourself or that you can purchase online. So ignore the fact that I'm working on a plane. I probably should have made it a cube. But this is just supposed to be a quick tutorial, so I didn't want to go overboard with a weird UV mapping, so I just wanted to make it real simple. I'm just making the background color a fill layer. Uh, since this is a water brush, I'm going to just make a ocean background, uh, put in some water in there. I like my water a little green tinted. Um, yeah, this isn't really too important since I'm just trying to teach you mainly the brush and how to save it, which I know might seem pretty straightforward, but you know, sometimes, sometimes it's just a little tricky. So anyway, I'm gonna go down here to my roughness. This is uh, water, so I'm gonna use my crystal two bitmap and I'm gonna have to rotate it. Hmm. Yes, it's very, uh, very shiny. So I could leave it like this, but I'm going to make it a little bigger because the brush I'm going to make is going to be a little bigger. So I'm just going to mess with the scale and bring that up. Perfect. No, wait. Yes, perfect. That looks good. So I'm going to make a new layer, just a regular layer, and then we're going to name it. Um, my brush is going to be like uh, those water sh uh, ripples that you get on the surface, so you can name it, you know, whatever, whatever is relevant to the brush that you're making. When you're done naming your layer and you're ready to pull in your alphas, you can do so either by going up to the file, import resources, or you can drag and drop into your shelf. I'm going to choose the latter and pull in some alpha tips that I had bought online from another artist. And I'm gonna change the import to alpha. I'm gonna bring over a couple more brushes too, might as well since I'm doing it now. And I'm also gonna pull over a cloud brush. Select them all, change them all to alphas, import them into my shelf, and hit import. And boom, we have our alphas. So first we're gonna go ahead and change the alignment to the camera view, just so it doesn't streak over. It doesn't really matter with the UVs in this case, but I prefer to use my camera view if I'm testing out a brush. So we're gonna mess with some of the sliders, the size, the flow, and then some of the jitter sliders. Just as look at the preview and see kind of if we can uh, work with what it's giving us. And then, oops, so shiny. Change the size of my brush, turn my pressure on, and then we're just gonna test. Sometimes you hit the wrong key and you have to recover. That's fine. And I'm gonna mess with the flow a little bit more. Just kind of tweaking the settings to what I would want them to be like. Obviously, I guess. Oh, 
this looks better. I'm just using a white color with nothing special going on. And now I'm gonna change it and actually mess with the color settings now. Turn my metallic up, cause why not? Roughness down, cause why not? Height, sure. This is just a test. We're gonna, we're gonna have a great time regardless. Yeah, that looks like water. Or something. And, you know, there's these, there's so many settings for a brush. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try a couple of different things. I'm gonna turn the follow path on. And, oh, I, the angle's not right, so I gotta change the angle. Oop, which is actually upside down for the alpha. That's fine, I'll just turn that around there. And there we go. My water curves, so I wanted to put that curve in my stroke. I'm just kind of messing around. Uh, the way the follow path works for your alpha is like right now it's horizontal. And if you go from left to right, it'll stay that direction like on the, your follow path. But if you start the brush from the right to the left, it will be upside down. So sometimes you might want that, sometimes you might not. You just have to kind of test it out and see what works best for what brush you're making. I'm gonna clean this up a little and get my eraser out. Clean up above the water line, get my dirt, take away some of the uh, water on the inside. Just a little. All right, cool. Yeah, that looks, looks like water. Cool, now we're going to go back to our brush and then we're gonna scroll down and in the empty space, we're gonna right click and we're gonna do create tool preset. No, nope. no wait. <laughs> in the event you accidentally make a tool preset, just right click it and hit delete. We're gonna go back to empty space and we're gonna hit create brush preset. So you're gonna right click your saved brush in the shelf, rename it whatever you want. I'll keep it simple and name it after the alpha. And, yep, it's one of those. And there you go, there's your brush. Uh, simple to use, water brush to use them however you see fit or for whatever you make. Oh, my layer is different. Oh, yeah. When I went back in uh, Control Z to Control Z, my layer name changed. So, and there you have it. Thank you for watching my very long-winded explanation of how to create and save a custom brush in Substance Painter. I would wave goodbye, but you can't see it. Ha, <laughs> water puns. Okay, I'm gonna go back to work now.